Hello and welcome back to CIS 125. Once again, I'm your instructor, Victor Campos. As a reminder, the class is being recorded for playback. And uh, we've got plenty to talk about on day two, week two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to briefly go over the stuff on Canvas for a moment. And then uh, we've got plenty of new things to do today. And uh, we'll get started right away, actually. Turn off the lights over here. Usually, these lights put too much glare. It's not too dark. Are we okay like this, or is this too dark, or are we okay? Things okay? Okay. Right. So, um, first thing that I want to show here briefly, uh, reminding you on the syllabus. Reminding you on the syllabus is that we've got these um, these dates coming up here. So just to zoom in to show you here briefly, uh, holidays and so forth. But the topic, the material of the class, notice it's kind of divided into two, into kind of like two weeks of material in, in a way, uh, an introduction to something and then a continuation of something. So kind of on two weeks. Uh, this week is the starting introduction of the software, specifically drawing, and then next week is more drawing. Then we've got introduction to using the software for environments and backgrounds and so forth, and then continuing on that. Then we've got brainstorming, plots, etc., and you see how that's divided up. We have a topic. We spend about two weeks on it or so. There is an assignment, usually every week. I'll explain the assignment, of course. And a uh, quick reminder, the assignments will always be due the next week on Tuesday. So what we learn about today uh, on this Monday, then the assignment will be due on the 13th. Question. I got to double check on that, but it should have been due yet uh, right. <laughs> I think I gotta check it. Thank you for that. I'll check it in one moment, but it should be due on the 13th. One moment. So these assignments are usually due one week uh, on a Tuesday so that you have time to work at home, but also so that there's time at the end of the day, right? We're here from about 12 to three. And then from about three to four, there's gonna be a little bit of open lab time if you want to stay and further do work. Or if you needed help from the previous week, there'll be some time there from three to four. That's why I have the assignments due the following Tuesday. So here's what's coming up for the, uh, for the, for the semester. Now, this particular week, week two, we've got the... Um, yeah, the deadline's there, wrong there. Okay, yeah, I'll fix that one moment. Uh, so there's, there's an assignment this week, which will, of course, uh, make sense once we learn the material for this week. What I do on my classes, I do a preview of the module. You may have looked at it yourself or not. That's fine. In class, I'm going to do a little bit of a preview of the material. Uh, I'm going to do a preview of the homework. And probably the homework won't make sense right away, of course, because we haven't learned the things yet. So then we're going to spend the day learning the things. Then I'll review the assignment so that then you have time to work on it and it's due the following week and such. Um, so this first welcome message here, here's what we're going to be covering. And here's the thing that about an introductory class, I, I wish I could just download all the information directly to your brain on how the software works because everyone wants to right away be able to do amazing things, but it takes little by little, step by step. Now the class is gonna be guided by me, yes, but I hope you're also on your own working some amount at home or in the lab or whatever, because you get good at something by practicing more with something. So I will be going at a certain pace as per the syllabus, but then you on your own can go on as you wish. Uh, keeping track of the deadlines and such. So for example, these very first things are maybe are going to feel very basic because we just need to get used to at least the software 
We need to get used to where is that button? Where is that tool? Where is that panel? What does right click do? That sort of thing. So the beginning will be a little slow, but then we're gonna ramp up and do some great things. Um, so as usual, I've just got a preview of what the week is all about. And there's gonna be an assignment, for example. Uh, backing up to week one, to remind you that every week under the live session, this is where it's going to have the recording. So last week's recording was uploaded last week, plus the notes and the summary. These are the notes that I write in person. You're free to download those, have a copy of them, of course. The recording is right there from last week. And what's cool about the recording is if you follow the link, you know, the whole, the whole lecture is there. It's all transcribed. Everything that I said is all there. I'm going to play this muted for a moment. But you can play the video. You can jump to different points in the recording. That one was an hour and 40 minutes. Uh, you can jump to various points. You can also search the transcript. You can search a, a keyword in the text there, and it'll jump to the point in the video. And you can also download the, the lectures. If you want a copy of these videos for yourself, you can click the download button and uh, you can have a copy of those if you wish. Now, when it is, uh, let's say you can't make it to class in person or you can't make it to class on Zoom, that's okay. We're not, it's not going to affect you that you were not here in person, but you do need to watch the recording at some point throughout the week because all the main material of the class is in the lectures. And it may be you know, one hour's long, three hours long, whatever, you need to watch it. But at least you have the speed, uh, the speed setting where you can watch it faster than normal speed. So if you put it on double speed, instead of it being an hour long lecture, it's only half an hour because you've doubled the speed. I'm going to sound like a chipmunk, but you will still get the material. Uh, I think for myself, double speed's a little too fast. Uh, one and a half speed's pretty good and one quarter speed is also a little faster so that it doesn't last as long as the normal time. But that's where you find the recordings every week on the week X live session. Uh, you'll have the recording and my notes. Plus there's this AI summary that Zoom creates. I didn't write this myself. Zoom analyzed the class and determined that this is what the class was about. So your mileage may vary. It may misspell things. It may not fully understand, but here's another way to get information about what a particular class was. So if you missed the class, maybe the first thing to do is check out the summary, then watch the recording, look at my notes as you're watching the recording, maybe play the recording in quick speeds, and you'll be able to catch up on the material for that week. And every week will be like that. There will be the live session material. Now, obviously we're in week two, so week two does not have that yet because it's currently being recorded right now to be added I will add those things at the end of the day, of course, but that's how I run my classes. We've got the class going on in person or on Zoom, and all of this is recorded, and I'll add it to Zoom at the end of the day. Did any of you back up to uh, week one and maybe check out any of the items back on week one live session? Tell me in the chat box, yes or no. Uh, but did any of you go back to the week one stuff and kind of review any of that? Did you check any of the notes? Did you replay the videos and so forth? Tell me in the Zoom chat box if yes or no. And so here, this particular week, we've got these resources that will be useful. Now, these are uh, there's no book required in this class. The material of the class will come from the lectures and from the various resources that I will put on a particular week. These will be available Monday morning, so you can preview them if you want. You want to check out these things throughout the whole week. But our textbook is this free website from Adobe. And I'm not saying you need to go to it and do all of these things right now. I'm just saying that this is the material that would be useful to add to the lecture this week. In a sense, they're all optional. But as I said uh, to get good at something, you need to practice. And therefore, any of the extra stuff that I put out there, it's recommended that you read it, you watch it, you do whatever. When I put it there, it'll be useful. For example, there's extra tutorials here. 
These are like three to six minute long videos uh, straight from Adobe that are helpful in various aspects like managing your workspace, creating symbols, etc. I'll cover the things in class, of course, but if you want even more knowledge, I have those in the resources. Homework here. Let me do a quick change on it because I put the wrong date, but on this real homework, last week was a homework, yes, but now we're going to actually get hands on using the software to create some drawings. I'm going to preview the homework. Then when we do the lecture, you're going to be able to do the homework. Right now, you probably won't be able to. So you're going to start to get used to using this software to draw. Now, tell me in the chat, actually, in the chat box, how many of you have used any drawing apps before? Photoshop, Pixlr, Procreate. Yeah, tell me in the chat box. That's why I said chat box. Uh, type it in the chat box. Uh, Krita, etc. So... Um, if you've used any other drawing software, tell me there in the chat. And we're going to see that there's a variety of software out there that people have used, which is really cool. In the old days, there was very, very few software out there, and now there's so many. So in this class, of course, we're going to use Adobe Animate. And that means we're going to use Adobe Animate. If you're good at Clip Studio Paint, if you're good at Procreate, if you're good at Pixlr, Illustrator, Photoshop, that's nice. But we're not using that in this class. In this class, we're using Adobe Animate. We're using this software that lets you draw just like all of the other software that you may or may not know. But in this class, we're going to focus on Adobe Animate. So people always ask, okay, can I do this assignment in Procreate? Short answer, no. Long answer, no. Because you're learning to use Adobe Animate in this class. That's why, I, again, I said the first few weeks might be a little bit slow because you might be used to other software. But you have to then learn this software. And the point of that is that if you go off to work in a graphic studio, in an animation studio, wherever, if you go off and work in a team or a company or whatever, it's not assumed that you'll be able to always do things how you want. Maybe that company wants to be done a certain way, and therefore you need to update your skills a bit to do it the way they want. So in this class, the client... The class wants to do it in the Adobe Animate software. So make sure you do the software, make sure you do the work in the Adobe Animate software that we're learning in this class. And there's a lot of feedback there on people. So thank you for that. So um, this particular week, you're going to use Adobe Animate to draw some characters. Now, the Assignments will vary between, I'm going to give you this and you do this. And it's also going to vary into original things, either original things or given things. This particular week is going to, I'm going to give you something. And then other weeks, you're going to be more original if you want. Uh, was there a question there? No? Yeah, I thought I saw a hand. No? Okay. So there's going to be either assignments that I'm going to give you something to do and then other assignments where you will be more creative in what you can do. And it, of course, will be in the assignment that I tell you which you can do. In this particular one, you're going to trace some characters. You're going to use the tools that we're going to learn to recreate, to redraw these characters that I'm going to give you. You're also going to color them and such. So after I show you, after, after we do the main lesson today... You'll learn how the software is set up, how to import graphics, how to create layers, how to use the various tools, drawing and coloring, et cetera. A future assignment will then have you create original characters. So specific steps on your own computer at home or in the lab, you're going to create a project folder. You're going to create a project file. I'm going to demonstrate how to do all of this in a moment, of course. You're going to create a particular file, you're going to set a frame rate, you're going to name it a certain thing, you're going to uh, import a graphic, creating a tracing layer, here's the examples, um, we'll get to that in a little bit, you're going to do all of this, etc. 
and then the um, you're going to do all of these items here. Note, this does not need to be a perfect copy of the original, but it must show effort. Some of these drawings that you're going to trace might have so many like little details of lines. You don't have to beat yourself up to make every single line of the original. But I do need to see that you're doing some effort to use the software, to use the drawing tools to recreate from the samples. You're going to color with flat colors or shading techniques. I'll cover those things, of course. You're gonna do th this, this, and that. Export as a PNG, upload these particular files. You can do this twice to two different characters, one particular character and another one. You're gonna do this twice. Upload it all to Canvas. I'm gonna be looking for these technical details. Again, I'm not gonna grade you on, that's not a perfect circle. I'm not going to grade you on, you're missing three lines of the character's hair. I'm going to grade you on the technical details of things. Question. Two characters. You must submit work for two different characters. Yes. So I'm going to be grading on the things that are done here. And obviously, if you miss a piece of the details, you don't get full credit. My grading is very focused on the details because I'm not grading on artistry, that's impossible. I'm grading on details. And so if you miss details, that's what's gonna affect your grade. Now, I might give you a note saying, you know, I might give you a critique kind of a note, but that's not gonna affect your grade, but I'm focused more on the technical aspect of, did you do technically what I'm asking for? You turn it in on time, you get full credit. If you turn it in late, it can only be up to nine points in addition to any of the mistakes you might have made, which will lower the grade. All of the details of what exactly I'm grading on is right there. Did you do this? Yes or no? Did you do this with some nuance? Sometimes some, some points have nuance. You kind of did it okay. And some of these say you did it yes or no. So every assignment is going to have details for grading as well. Most assignments are worth 10 points. Most assignments are going to be due on a Tuesday, again, the week after the lesson. So uh, Tuesday the 13th is when this is due. And, um, this is the preview. Obviously, we haven't learned the things yet. That's a preview of things. We pause. Questions or comments on this that we're going to learn. All right, so this will make more sense as we do the actual lecture. Let me just check one thing. I think there might be another little mistake on things. Just one moment. That'll be good. Okay, so, um, okay, so the, The rest of the module there, there's a little cyber cafe there. You can uh, upload off topic things. Of course, keep it respectful for class. Uh, we've got the Q&A discussion if you've got questions. And then the wrap up of the week, which uh, tells you here's what we covered. Here's some optional thing if you want to do this. This is not any graded sort of thing, but if you want to further create a sense of community, here's a little question here. If you want to respond in the cyber cafe, what's your favorite movie or genre? That's just a fun thing, extra thing to do if, if you want to do that. Next week, we're going to keep using the software, but then to work on original characters. So little by little, we're learning the software in various ways, because ultimately we have some big goals to accomplish. Let me preview, you, preview for you something from a previous semester. From a previous semester... Here's eventually an assignment that you're going to do. Um, the original characters. Little by little, we're going to build up this sort of portfolio of things in this class. Little by little, you're going to create original characters, environments or worlds, uh, storyboards, scripts, plots, and ultimately will result in a, in a little animated project. 
by the end of the semester, all of you will create some sort of little movie, animated movie project. You're all going to be your own very own Studio Ghibli or Disney or Trigger or pick whatever studio you like. So you're all going to create something. And you might think in one semester, I'm going to create my own animated magnum opus. Yes, because I'm going to show you here what previous semesters have done. Everyone is in the same boat as you of my previous semesters. I've taught this class for like 10 years. And every semester, this is the end result that people do all of these things. And of course, the more you put into it, the more time, the more effort, the more result that you get. And even if you start here with like zero experience, everyone's going to end with something pretty cool, something that you created, something that's original. Again, step by step. Let me show you first some of the original characters that people have created uh, on previous semesters. Now, this is to give you, this is two things, to give you inspiration and to give you despair. Because you're going to think, I cannot do that. I'll never be able to do that. Yes, you will. Keep practicing. Keep working. Use the open labs. You'll get there. Maybe not one semester, maybe two semesters, maybe a lifetime, whatever. But it can be done. So I, ha I haven't seen these in a while. So I'm just randomly kind of going in and picking someone to look at. Uh, here we go. So here's this original character. This is also in a model sheet uh, where the character is defined in various ways. Eventually, you're going to do your own original characters. And so this character here, we've got the character, the various colors, various expressions, posing, a little bit of info about them. Here's one example. Let's see another classmate, or oh, this is a previous semester's classmate. So again, front design, profile, behind, expressions, colors, etc. More characters here, different poses of the characters, different expressions, colors of the characters. So you're seeing here a variety of people, uh, you know, all of them kind of feel like very high level at the moment, but yes, there's plenty of, uh, again, I'm just going randomly here and I'm not, I'm not grading on artistic quality, I'm grading on technical aspects. You're seeing over and over that we're seeing, oh, the character is front side, profile, backside. I'm seeing various expressions of the character. I'm seeing colors of the character. Those are the sort of the technical things I'll be grading on, not the artistic, artistic aspects. Like, for example, over here, what I would say critically is, okay, this is cool, but I can't see that arm. Can you see an arm from your distance? There's an arm right there. When the character is in profile like this, they drew the arm in a color that was not so good because I can't see their arm sideways. I can see their arms forward and back perfectly, but on sideways, that's a mistake. I'm not grading and, give, and putting negative points because they did that. I'm not grading on the artistry of things, but I will then note to them, let's improve that aspect by maybe using the, the same color of the horn right here to align the arm so that you can actually But these are things that we're going to be learning as we go through the class. See a few more here. So more characters, different styles. We're seeing a variety of, you know, anime inspired characters, furry characters, uh, American style characters, just a whole range of things. We're seeing the range of, oh, someone's been drawing all their life versus, oh, someone started more recently versus someone, oh, they spent 20 hours on this thing versus someone that spent two hours on this thing. So we're seeing the full variety of uh, results. And I'll be showing examples throughout the semesters. Here we have completely different. Everything's been a humanoid character. Now we have a little uh, cat character. And here they further drew the, or uh, submitted the colors of the character and, sp and spelled it out. Here's the shading. Here's the main fur, the fur accents and the tooth. Here's the ear color. Here's how the characters design, ears and fluff line up, et cetera. So how tall the character is, all of these details, turn around positions of the character. So maybe you see in a few of them there, that's my style. That's how I like to draw. So you'll be in good company. 
Maybe you'll see other people and say, oh, that looks like an interesting style. Can I do something like that? Or you might say, no, my style is completely original. I can't wait to do my own work and submit it. So this is one of the of the many assignments that we will have that is the more creative side of things where you will create your own original characters. In addition, there will also be assignments where here's what you need to do, follow my guidelines, let's say. Those are slightly less creative, but they're important to learn the software, to get used to the tools and such. Then there will be the assignment of here's more creativity. So questions, comments on this, either in person or on the chat. Uh, are there any here that stand out to you that seem interesting, that right away catch your eye? Tell me in the chat box there. Uh, on this one, they also did, here's other characters within the world of my creation. There's the character Juke, and the character Helldug, and the character the Ancient Demon Hound. So all of these various ideas. That's an assignment coming up eventually. Uh, jumping even further ahead, eventually, we're also going to work with um, creating environments or creating a world, creating a place where your story will happen. So yes, ultimately, eventually, you're going to have, again, you're going to eventually create a, a movie project with a character in a world doing something all in one semester or so. Because as a reminder, the class is CIS 125, Animation 1, and then CIS 126, Animation 2, and that's in the summer. Hopefully you're planning on taking 125 and 126. 126 is in the summer, because then it fully then adds up everything that we start in part one, we finish it in the summer. So here's a scary castle environment. farmhouse, spooky, scary house. Arctic environment. Top of a uh, scary attic. Everyone draws scary stuff all the time for some reason. Little marketplace, I guess, Main Street and such. Now, notice also here these particular ones that I'm showing. Do you see kind of like the line work feels a little different? The outlines feel a little different compared to the previous assignment. Because again, we're going to have different tools that we're using, different uh, requirements, and so forth. Question? Uh, part two, the 126 in the summer, will also be available on Zoom the same way I do this class. So we're seeing on this one that it's different types of line work to get used to the variety of drawing tools that we have within the software. Some of them have very flat colors, maybe a little bit of highlights and so forth, cell shading style. Some of them might have gradients and such. Plenty of things to learn. And again, this is what I said earlier. I wish I could just download all this knowledge straight to your brain, like in the Matrix when Neo became a you know, Kung Fu expert, but we have a way to go. Uh, we have slowly to work at it. And I know everyone's got great ideas. They wanna jump right ahead as quickly as possible, but little by little, step by step. There's like a peasant village and a castle and mountains. You see the variety of ideas that everyone has. Very scratchy style. Uh, technically, this person didn't follow the rules and didn't get a good grade because they didn't use the right tools. So always follow the directions of the assignments. There's like a high-tech control center sort of thing. iPad and crystals and the like. And uh, scary uh, street corners or alleys. So here's an assignment coming eventually, creating environments. Well, all of that's going to come together into some sort of plot, some sort of actual animation, some sort of um, some sort of um, story, and so part of that is 
creating a storyboard or a plan for your project. I'm not going to zoom in really on these, but uh, here's several uh, points in a story where the character shows up, post-apocalyptic, this and that, battle the character, whatever. And that's the idea that eventually becomes their full movie. Uh, some big ideas, quick sketches, some writing, and so forth. So you might see the character that I showed plus their environment. Now the storyboard, how it comes together. On this one, there's a title screen. Fades from black to the environment, then title fades in. Cilia enters scene. Cilia walks in from the left until center. Ambience, noises, and chill music. So these are this is a plan for eventually what will be animated. Now this also gives you a plan about have I... Do I have enough time to do what I want to do? Have I learned enough of what I want to do? Am I going to be able to come into the open lab and ask for help and do the work in time? So there may, maybe there's some big, great ideas, but ultimately, however, there's a deadline. The class eventually ends. When there's no deadline, your movie will be infinite long, a never-ending story, because you never run out of time to finish it. But with a deadline, you know that the time is going to eventually come that I got to cut out that idea. I just can't. I don't have time for it. That's why there's animation studios where you've got dozens or hundreds or thousands of people to work on a project. You are an animation studio all by yourself. So you're going to have to do it all. And within the deadlines, you can do it. I've seen it before. I've taught this class for over a decade. And I see the variety of people's... Um, work and it's amazing this is one of my favorite classes to teach because i get to see all of your creativity where it starts off as little sketches on paper and then eventually becomes a nice little movie let me show you what examples of these actual end results are and i'm going to skip to the ones that actually turned it in the right way which is to please upload the video here we go not really all of these are eventually the end result of everything that we're learning. Just check volumes and such. Uh, you should also hear it at home. If this has volume or not. But anyway, hey, there's that cat character we saw, and there's that alley that we saw, and we've got, wow, camera movement and animation of the legs and such. Birds. Now, eventually, when we get there, your animation will only need to be at least 30 seconds long. I'm not looking for a 20-minute long thing, at least 30 seconds. You might say, wow, 30 seconds? I can't tell my whole story in 30 seconds. We, we're going to see uh, some of these examples that I'll show you. There's a beginning, there's a middle, and an end. It's not a feature-length movie and such, but there is a beginning, there is a middle, there is an end in a short amount of time. So we're seeing the variety of results. Styles and plots and such.
There you go. Epic. So we have all of these stories and styles of art and everything. Uh, maybe another time I will further set myself up to, to show you some of these other ones that are... Um, uh, the assignment, of course, was to submit the video file, the work in progress file. Uh, so all of those details will come eventually. I'll show more of these as time goes on. And so the um, there's lots of results here. And the question about do I have a favorite one? They're all my favorite. And I forgot them all because, you know, I taught the class a year ago. So I see so many amazing works by everyone. And everyone really is very impressive. Even if you see some of these, that well, that's just stick figures. But still, they created something from their own mind with their own characters and ideas. And maybe it's not as polished as some of the other ones, but it's still something that they created and can be proud of and is their own particular um, for their own portfolio. Let's see if I can open this one. It's in 3GP format. Let's see if this can open it. I guess so. Okay. So most of these have a sort of to be continued, and that's perfectly fine. Some of them have a beginning, middle, and end. Um, again, grading on the aspects of the rubric. Did you do these specific things? If you did, good grade. It's not grading on the artistry and such. A stick figure result could get a great grade. You know, if it has the effort and if it has the details, it could get a good grade. It's not being graded on. This class is not a focus on grading artistry. It is grading technical aspect. So something to look forward to, uh, the totality of this semester plus the um, summer semester. Uh, this semester we're spending in learning the various tools and creating the various assets and starting points, but the eventual end movie itself will be submitted or completed in part two of the class in the summer. So that you have lots of time to work on it. Um, but you'll always feel, I wish I had more time. And it could be a lifelong thing, a lifelong project that you work on. Uh, but the uh, big idea of part one and part two of the class is to get the knowledge of this software, to get used to creating um, a full sort of package of a portfolio. So that then if you're going to move on to UCSD, San Diego State, the Art Institute, CalArts, wherever, Harvard, wherever, that you have a portfolio and a good footing for the concepts of working in the world of animation. Now, this class also has a component of video games where you're gonna learn some amount of programming to make a video game based on the characters as well. Um, that's a little harder for me to show you at the moment. I'll show you that later, but that's also a big focus of part two of the class where there will be their programming to make an actual video game. Tell me in the chat box there if you've done any programming before, if you've programmed HTML, JavaScript, Ruby, Python, whatever, Tell me in the chat box if you've had any experience in programming, yes or no. That'll be part of the class as well. Um, the first sort of beginning parts of it is the artistic side of it. And then eventually some of the programming also. If you don't have any experience, that's fine. All of this is an intro class. I'm going to learn plenty. Now, of course, at Southwestern College, as I mentioned last week, we're a two-year college. The four-year college, the master's degree college, the PhD college, those are the colleges where you go to the next level of things. Um, but at this point, we have an intro to things. So some programming, no programming. There we go. We have a variety of responses there. Cool. So that's a preview of what's to come, either in inspiration or to feel like I, I hope I have enough time to do it all. These are all examples of people that went through the whole semester and they got it done. And I know you can too. You just have to put the time into it. Right, so what we're going to do is the... Um, I'm going to do this. Um, we're actually up to the first break. 
we're going to take our first break and we're going to start to learn this, the interface and such of the software uh, in a few different ways so that we can do the first homework. But uh, it's uh, 1254. I will take a 10 minute break uh, until 104. You can stay here if you wish. You can step out if you wish. Bathrooms are right out there. Cafeteria is over there. We'll get we'll come back in about 10 minutes and we're gonna start using the Adobe Animate software.
All right, so let's get started. Um, as we do this main lecture, at any point when people have any questions, of course, raise your hand. Don't just blurt out a question. You can raise your hand and either myself or one of the assistants will come and help you. Now today in person here, we have Angie right there in the back. Say hello right there. So Angela can, can help today. Uh, and we have three assistants. Some of them may be here in person or they may also be online. But at any point when you have any questions, raise your hand. If I can answer the question right away, I will. If you need a little bit of help on your computer, one of the assistants will come over to help you. And again, all of this is being recorded. So then if you want to further replay it at home, I would recommend that you do. Now, I had said earlier, I think everyone already did this, but you should have uh, started up the Adobe Animate software. You should have logged in. It didn't seem like anyone had any trouble, so we're ready to go. Uh, if it's not working, of course, raise your hand. One of the assistants will come and help you with that. Uh, but I started up the software. A question there? Uh, Angie, could you help their angel, I believe? Uh, so um, we've got the software running. And when it first starts up, it uh, has the little question about, are you new to animate, which we saw last week? That is something to make note of. Um, these computers all have this software called um, Deep Freeze. It's actually this little polar bear in the corner, you see little polar bear staring. That is Deep Freeze. And what Deep Freeze is, is that these computers are locked. These computers refresh themselves back to our factory settings when you turn them off. So if you saved your homework on the desktop and you leave and come back, it'll be gone because Deep Freeze has frozen our computer to our certain factory settings. So that's good and bad. That's bad for you, of course, if you left your work here, you didn't take it home, it's gone. But it's good because if someone messes with the computer, if it gets a virus, if someone does something to it, we just restart it and it goes back to factory settings. So be aware of that. The computers in this lab have deep freeze. You need to make sure you uh, take the, the work home with you, that sort of thing. Now, what we're gonna learn during the class usually is just practice work. You don't need to turn it in. You don't need to keep it, whatever. But be aware that anything we create in class is you need to take it with you if you want to keep it. And there's a few ways to do that. Uh, do any of you have maybe like a USB drive that you brought with you? If you did, you can use that. You can plug it into the side here. If you didn't, here's another way. Here's another way to save your work and take it home. Southwestern College gives you space in the cloud for you to save your work. Let me show you where that's at. Um, when you log into the, uh, when you log into the MySWC account and you have all of this, these boxes and interface, um, actually they just moved it. So I should have checked where it was. Um, I think it's in 365, where did they put it? Uh, Google, here we go, Google Drive. So this is a little bit of an optional thing that the college gives you for you to save your work, take it home with you and so forth. But when you log into the college's website to your account and you find the Google Workspace section, there's a Google Drive. Google Drive is a space for you to upload your work. I don't think there's a limit or if there's a limit, it's huge. So any files that you create in class, you need to take them with you either on a USB drive or upload them to your Google Drive. And then you can access it from home or any computer when you log into your account there. I'll remind you about this later on today, but the Google Drive here is where you can save your work if you want. I started up my software here. It's got this what's new message. And every time we turn it on, every time we turn on the, the software in this room, it's going to ask you the same thing over and over because of deep freeze. It's going to ask, are you new? Here's what's new. Every time, just close it, just ignore it, just click skip, whatever. 
you want it to just go to the main screen here. Just check here. Is everyone on the right place here? Does everyone have the ability to animate? All right, so uh, when we get to this screen here, notice what it says, start a new file fast. Adobe Animate is amazing because it can let you create characters, drawings, environments, movies, animations, video games, lots of things. And so with these quick starting templates, just to start to learn this basic aspect of things, click on this full HD file template right here. So on, we'll look at some of these other templates, but for the moment, click on the full HD. At this file, we get an interface, windows, all of that stuff. And as I do the lecture here, I'm gonna be sometimes zooming in onto my screen to point to something, zooming in. Uh, if you want to zoom in yourself for whatever reason, you just one one moment. Remember, when you have a question, please raise your hand instead of interrupting the class. So when uh, if you want to zoom in or out like how I do here, you can do this also by holding down the uh, Windows key and then pressing the plus or minus on that. So if you ever need to zoom in on things, control plus, control minus. And I'll be doing that a few times as we uh, do the work because sometimes I need to zoom in. So when we get this empty file, this is the best thing and this is the worst thing. It's the best thing because I can now create anything I want. It's the worst thing because where do I get started? I have so many ideas and I don't know the interface. I'm better at Illustrator or Procreate or whatever. Now the cool thing, is with Adobe Animate, there'll be some familiar things if you have experience in Photoshop or Illustrator. Photoshop and Illustrator have layers, for example. Animate has layers. Uh, Illustrator, Photoshop have various tools in a toolbar. Same thing here. The All the Adobe software, they've got various panels and so forth. And the first few assignments are really just going to get used to using the software because there's a lot. But the first thing I want to do here is we'll do a file, save as. I'm going to save this file. This is where then you can decide, I'm going to save this onto the desktop, or I'm going to save it onto my flash drive, or I'm going to upload it to Google Drive or something. For the easy moment at the moment, uh, just click desktop on the left. Call this file whatever you want. I'm going to call this week two practice. And this is going to be maybe a little bit slow for some of you that are a little bit more advanced. But again, it's new software. It's something new to get used to. But basically, save your file, save as, call it whatever you want. I'm going to save it on the desktop. And notice this is going to save as a .fla file. Other software like Microsoft Word is .docx. Graphics are .jpg. Um, we have other extensions, right? JPEG, GIF, PDF, etc. We have a whole bunch of extensions of file types. The one we're working on in this class is FLA. Um, so whenever you see an FLA file, you know that you can open it in Adobe Animate. So I'm going to save it with whatever name. Hey. 
and I'm going to get used to some of these basic things, just like even zooming in and out of the, even zooming in and out of the layer. Uh, if we're using regular old paper and pencil, you know, I'm look, I'm drawing something. I can get it closer. Whatever I can move the page around to to draw. I don't know about you, but like I can naturally when I draw, my hand moves a certain way. I might need to put the paper a certain way to get that line perfect. You'll be able to do that as well in Animate. Once I break out the the pen tablets, for the moment, what we're going to do is use the mouse. And usually, what I do is we're going to learn something the hard way, and then we'll learn the easier way. But for the moment, we're going to learn the hard way, a little bit of drawing with the mouse, which is not the best, but some people can get good at it. And for, so, for example, on the left side, we've got all of these tools. One of them is this brush tool, classic brush tool. One thing about getting good at software is memorizing keyboard shortcuts. Instead of moving your mouse over to click on something and then moving back and forth, keyboard shortcuts are going to be so useful. You see right there, the brush tool, keyboard shortcut B, simply the letter B will jump me to the brush tool. The letter B, the move tool, E, eraser, etc. Little by little, you'll memorize these as you keep using them. We can download a cheat sheet that has them all on one piece of paper to look at them and memorize them, sure. But little by little, you'll, you'll learn them. And so what I want to do here is switch to the brush tool. Go ahead and select the brush tool. And then a whole bunch of properties appear on the side. Honestly, this software is pretty complicated because it can do it all. Graphics, animation, sound, games, programming, so many things. And a lot of that complication comes with, I've got a tool selected, but what can I do with it? Look at all of these details right here. The properties of this tool are all of these. And then I have object and frame and document and all of this. So there's panels that have sub panels, tools that have sub tools, just a lot of complication. And so I'm in the brush tool, classic brush tool. I got all of these options. We'll look at these later. But this is color and style, fill, and then alpha or percentage. My color is currently set to blue. I want another color, pick another color. If I want opacity, I can change opacity. Look at other things in a moment, but I got the brush tool, brush tool. Here's some advanced practice, write your name, sign it. How many of you know cursive uh, or whatever? So sign your name with the mouse. See how hard it is. That looks so sloppy, I can't even read that. But once we get the uh, brush tools uh, will um, have more comfort with it. There's another advanced college thing. Uh, get the brush tool. Draw yourself today a happy sun. You know, we wish it was sunny today, but, you know, we're going to have rain and such. So draw a sun. Now, obviously, this basic stuff, we're going to get way more advanced in the future. But right now, I'm just telling you, play with this brush tool uh, to you know, draw a little sun and trees and such. Just play with it for a moment, this brush tool, pick a couple colors, doodle whatever for a moment. This one tool, bunch of options. I want to resize my my brush here. Oh, there's a there's an option here. Sizes. Right here, size. Once you have the brush tool selected, then on the properties panel, you should have size right there, classic brush options. Just sketch a little bit right there, how to clear the layer, that's pretty advanced. We'll get to that in one moment. So doodle some stuff, make some mistakes, then we'll cover of course more. Now, if you're used to something like Photoshop, we're working with working with multiple layers. Animate has multiple layers. So if you look on the bottom corner here, timeline. This calls it timeline rather than layers because we're also dealing with animation. Uh, an animated project is made out of multiple drawings, 
in a sequence, hundreds or thousands or millions of drawings in a sequence to create the illusion of motion. We'll cover animating all of that later. We're still with the basics. But do you see under the timeline, it says layer one. And if you hover over, you get these various pop-up items here. One of them, for example, is this hide the layer. That doesn't clear it, it just hides it. And then there's a lock, protect the layer. Outlines, I don't know what that is. We'll cover it later, et cetera. So there's a few icons that appear here. But even if you've never used Adobe Animate, the secret to make a new layer is somewhere in that quadrant. If I wanted to make a brand new layer, if I wanted a brand new sheet of paper to draw a brand new thing, where do you think in that corner you do that action? There, new layer, add a layer plus a layer or create a folder or delete a layer or other advanced things we'll get to later. Don't click on those yet. But over here we have create layers, organize layers, delete layers. Create a new layer. Layer one, layer two. Well, when we get advanced, we're gonna have a background layer, a character layer, a sky layer, a castle layer, whatever. We're gonna have organization in the project. And it's good that we have the ability to name these layers. If you double click, double click, And try to rename it. I'd also say uh, no spaces, capital letters, dashes, etc. So it'll just tell you. Okay. So for the moment, what I'm just doing here is, um, you know, just naming these things, getting the practice. So we have this layer one. We have this layer two. Call these things whatever you want, double clicking on them. Lock layers, view layers. Here's the complication, one of the many complications. You have to pay attention to what layer you're working with. And later when we talk about frames, what frame you're working with, you have to pay attention to what tool you're using. You have to pay attention to what you've selected. So many details. Because regular drawing software, you, you can kind of think about it as just having, you know, two dimensions, width and height. But something like this has three dimensions. And I mean more the dimension of time. Actually, four dimensions, because we also have then layers and then time. So we'll get to all of that. But I created a brand new layer. Yeah, the plus sign right there creates a brand new layer. And something very easy mistake to make is that, you know, I made a new layer and I'm drawing a new character. It's a character. And so I, I'm drawing a brand new character, but whoops, I drew it on the same layer as everything else. It's very easy to lose track of those things. But do you see it highlights? I'm currently on layer ABC. I click there, I'm currently on layer X, Y, Z. When I draw there, that's a separate layer. If you're used to other software with layers, you know that a little bit. But if this is something a little bit newer, it's like multiple sheets of paper. On this notepad here, I drew something on this paper, and then I got another layer below it, one drawing here, one drawing here. It's easy to keep track of which one I'm on. But in software, it's a little harder. It's a little too subtle. Just keeping track of what layer that I'm on is important. So as I'm drawing here, you know, maybe I was going to draw some sort of cat character, fox character. What is that? Is that a cat or a fox? Let's say it's a fox. I'm drawing amazing stuff, but whoops, I made a mistake there. So like every other software, there's a few ways to fix your mistakes. One way, for example, is simply undo, 
edit menu, undo, or control Z, like any other software. So that's something that you're gonna memorize. I made a mistake, just control Z on the keyboard, take it back. Every time you control Z, you take it back, take it back. If you went back too far, edit, redo, control Y. Control Z to take it back. I went too far back, control Y to bring it forward. Control Y, control Y, control Y, control Z. So undo or redo. That's something you're gonna do a lot. That's something you're gonna memorize quick. Undo, redo. The annoying thing with Adobe Animate is that it remembers everything that you did. Even from changing layers, undo that, go back to my previous layer. Clicking on a different frame or different tool, undo that, go back to the previous one. Sometimes you have to undo three times to do the one thing because it remembers everything that you did. I switched between that tool and that tool and that tool. All of those are an undo. So don't be surprised if you're going to undo multiple times. Just something to get used to. Now let's say I'm doing all of this amazing work. What is important for you to do in any software when you do a little bit of work? What should you always do eventually when you do some amount of work? Save it. So you wanna save what you have here, either keyboard shortcut, control S, to the file menu, and it'll remind you over here with this little asterisk, this little star, you haven't saved this yet. If the computer crashes, you're gonna lose it all. So you want to remember to save. And I've been working with Animate for so many years and other software for so many years, even coding. I do a little bit of code and I save it right away. Code some more, save it right away. Do a little drawing, save it right away. Draw a little bit, save it right away. And I've just memorized. Basically, all the apps have Control S or on the Mac, Command S, but you can save quickly. I would recommend save it often. And so I've been drawing this here. One of the cool things about this type of software is that you can uh, make changes so many ways so easily. I was drawing and I wasn't really thinking of what I'm drawing, but I drew this fox and I drew it with like red lines. Maybe I wanted orange lines or black lines or gray lines or whatever. Well, I can make changes to everything that I'm doing at all times in various ways. And that's again, part of what we're learning as we get started with the software. Uh, I'll show you this in a moment, but for example, let's say I wanna make a quick change and just turn it all blue for some reason. Well, there's, I did it very quickly, but let me back up here. There's so many ways to do the same thing. On the one hand, it's, it's nice that there's many ways to do the same thing. But on the other hand, it's kind of a, also annoying because which is the best way, which is the fastest way, which is the most obvious way. There's just many ways and I'll show you as we go on. So the, if for example, I wanna make some change to what I've drawn here, I don't like the colors anymore. I need to make a selection. There's many ways to do this. I was using the brush tool to um, draw some lines, but one of the tools that you'll use a lot is this selection tool right here. I kind of think about it as the move tool, remembering the letter V for move, select, selection. If I go to the selection tool and I click one time on the drawing, even this will be something to learn. I clicked on my drawing and if I want to move it, Whoops, it's only moving that part, not the eyes, not the ears. Hmm. If I click, you know, I'm clicking on the character right there. I'm clicking on it and I want to move it. Nope, that doesn't do anything. So far, what you've learned is to draw with the brush tool. And the brush tool is creating these outlines, these, uh, these fills, technically. And when you click to select, only the things that are highlighted, are actually selected. 
those eyes were not selected. And everything that is selected is also what is connected. This whisker connected to the, to the muzzle right here, this whisker connected to the muzzle. When I click on that, all of that selects because it's all connected. The eyes are not connected. If I click on the eye and move the eye, how? well, only the outline of the eye moved, not even the pupil, because those were not connected. If instead the pupil was connected to the eye, and then I move it, okay, everything moves. I'm just showing you here that this is a very quirky, very detailed software that everything matters. And if I wanted to move the whole fox head, well, I could, for example, with the move tool, create a selection box like this. Everything selected, now everything is movable. If I only select a piece, that only that moves. Even some weird things like this. If I make a selection, watch this. If I make a selection like right here, and then I move that, only that piece moves. Make these selections of just like little pieces of lines. That's interesting. That's also annoying as a beginner, because I, I look at this as a character, as a fox head. Animate doesn't. It looks at it as, as lines, squiggles, colors, not a thing, not a character. So part of what's what we have to learn in the beginning is making these selections to move things around. That. Select the two pieces of a whiskers here. Well, let's say I, I select what I've drawn here. My properties, these, these have switched over here. The properties, I'm not, it's not the tool, but the object, which has various characteristics, X and Y position on my screen, width and height, colors. Ah, there's an option here to smoothen and straighten. That's interesting. I'll look at that later. But here we have color. So after I drew this and after I select it, then the tool says, you've got this object selected. If I don't have an object selected, okay, maybe you're, here's the properties of the document. If I jump to another tool, here are the properties of this tool. Selected this object. I'm going to change the fill, something else. Create a new layer here. Go ahead and create a new layer. So uh, I'm hiding these layers here. I'm, I'm turning off their visibility for a moment. Hide these previous layers. Create a new layer. All this layer creature. With the brush tool on your brand new creature layer, with any color, draw a creature. I'll go over for, and then I'll go look at it in a moment, but try to draw some creature with what you've been doing so far. Layer. tool and again just to kind of get used to it let's draw some little thing on a new layer
right? So there's, you might say in a certain way, there's so much to, so much way to go based on what I showed from the previous semesters where they've drawn these characters so well and colorized them and created these various poses for them and then the model sheets and then the animation. Yes, there's a long way to go. That's why we're practicing slowly in the beginning here. But little by little, we'll learn these advanced things as well as remember when I put into the, into the Canvas class, I have the um, resources every week. I have these extra, these extra uh, videos and readings and so forth from Adobe for you to further learn these concepts in addition to what I talk about in the class to keep practicing. Say I drew something and I want to color it. Here we have a variety of ways to do this, like everything. Um, but let's say I drew this and I just want to fill in some colors. Um, we have a different tool for that. Notice we've been using the brush tool here. We've got these other ones. What's this fluid brush and line tool? And we'll get to all of that. But I drew this. We, we were drawing a little bit with the classic brush tool. And then we have got another tool here, paint bucket tool that has a keyboard shortcut of K, maybe K for bucket. The bucket tool used to drop in colors into to my drawings here. So try this, select your bucket tool, select some fill color. And notice even here, we have a couple of ways to select a color. Once I've got the tool selected, I can so back down on the bottom left where the tools are. Another place, another place to select colors is right here within the actual panel of the toolbox, I mean. From there, you can also select colors or from the properties over here. There's many ways to do the same thing. And here we have, I don't know, 200 colors or something. But of course, we've got a way to mix the color that we need. That's not the right shade of red. I need my shade of red see that later, but there's just so many things to do. And even these gradients over here, wow, there's these blending of colors. Later on, we'll learn more color blends and such. But for the moment, I just want to fill in some color here. I'll select some green. I'll click filled in a color. It didn't, in my case, did not fill in the tail. It's just to get you used to, you know, a color and it didn't fill in the tooth. But this is to, to get you to think about how the... Um, Importance of knowing the uh, about your um, your drawings that wherever there's a line, well, the color only fills in up to that line, and then it doesn't cross over. So click that to fill it in, or fill it in here. So this is a separate color. This is interesting. Watch this. If I click on this area of color, I can drag that and move it away over here. So the color of the tail is its own separate thing. And I moved it off over there, the color of the main body here, clicking once to select. That's its own thing. All of these are independent objects. These I can click to select and then on the keyboard press delete. That's another way to delete things. You can click to select and press delete. It's funny, it deleted everything except the eyes. That's because the eyes are the only part that are not touching any other line. Animate has a big importance on lines that touch are one line. Technically, this whole thing is one line. You see it as a head and horns and tail and fingers. Animate sees it as one line. That is one line. These two eyes are two different lines. And even this color that I filled in on the tooth, well, that's the filled color of the tooth, but it's one line. Adobe sees it as one line. That fill color there, will shape fill color, that's one line. Adobe sees it as one line.
this move tool, you can click to select to move. Maybe the outline is separate. Yep, it's a separate color, it's a separate line. You can double click. That selected mostly everything. It selected the eyes. In my case, I'm gonna double click the outline. That selected everything. Single click. This is the nuance and the complication. One single click selected my outline. A double click selected the outline and the inside color. And with this same tool, I can further manipulate my drawings like this. I need those, I need those uh those horns to be pointier and scarier. So if I if I move my mouse close to, I've got the I've got the selection tool, the move tool. I've got the selection tool. And if I get close to an edge of a line, see how it changes and it shows you you're about to manipulate the curve of that line. See how it's normal over here, close to the edge. That's a curve. On some places, it might show a little triangle. You're about to manipulate the corner point. You're about to manipulate the curve, the corner point. And when I, when I see the icon change that way, if I click and drag, stretching out and manipulating and, wow, doing all these weird things. This is not even my final form. So... I'm pushing and pulling the lines and these insides. Why didn't the rest of the horn stretch out like I envisioned? Because it's not a horn, it's lines. Animate doesn't see it as a horn or a body part or a finger or a tail. It sees it as lines, which in the beginning is a little maybe weird. I think Animate has one of the most creative drawing engines compared to other apps. But with all of that, detail and nuance, sometimes there's frustration because I just want to do something that I know that I've done in other apps easily. But with a lot of this nuance, you can, once you master it, can get pretty good at a lot of interesting aspects of it. So here I'm just kind of pushing and pulling these edges. Try that for a moment. Whatever you drew, just go to the edges of things and start to push and pull and just kind of see what happens. You're going to probably see things that you didn't expect. I thought that was a nice little simple curve of the thumb, but as I push and pull it, hey, those lines are kind of weird all over the place. My case here, the fingers, the color didn't extend all the way to the inside of the thumb. Well, you can go in further and manipulate this. Anything that you've drawn, you can manipulate further and further. Look at that. I'm pulling out this detail that wasn't there eventually or originally. Yeah, maybe it takes some effort and trial and error. And where do I put the mouse and all of that? Actually, let me show you something before that. Uh, what's annoying is that the uh, that move tool and such uh, with the selection tool, often the default is this snap icon, which I hate. Uh, so you might as well. You're trying to push and pull things and things are snapping in weird places. I hate that. So remember to do this. This will probably be very helpful to you. Go to the selection tool. Go to the, um, you know, the, the properties of the selection tool and turn off that magnet. At the moment, it is turned on because it's highlighted. There it is off. That's off. That's on. It's so subtle. I don't, I don't, I don't like that either. See how that one's a little highlighted? It's on. That one's not so highlighted. It's off. Turn that snap off because then you will be able to fully manipulate the lines exactly as you want. If you have that on, when you try to manipulate, these are kind of going to jump all over the place sometimes. So if it's not manipulating how you want, turn off snap to object. Play with those lines for a moment. This arm is a little puny. So instead, I'm going to pull it out like this. There we go. Now we got a beefy arm. And I need the tail point to be more pointed over here, so I'll stretch it out. Turn that on or off as necessary because it might get in your way. Make that curve like that. So I had my original pass through of lines, and then I can go in and further manipulate. You know, the, this little leg right here, I need it. 
it to be something more like this. Uh, could you help over here, Angie? You get one help in one moment. So I'm just kind of playing around with this, pushing and pulling lines, seeing what's happening, getting some nuance of it all. Like this, I didn't even think about this. When I first drew that leg, I just drew a little leg. But then now as I kind of push and pull the lines, now they kind of look like little talons that I didn't have an idea before. And maybe if I have, you know, this color over here, if I jump back to my brush tool and finish drawing that other part of the toes, it's just infinite amount of editing that you can do for good or for bad. Um, how many of you like me are perfectionists? And you can't move beyond something unless it's perfect. I'm going to tell you, put that, leave that perfectionism at home. Because you're never going to finish your work if you are zoomed in to 200% and manipulating every pixel. When eventually we get to the animations and such, no one is going to see that wrong pixel when you're playing a 30-second animation. Of course, your characters and your ideas are important. But like this, look at this. This torments me right here. Look at this line right here. This, oops, this, this little line right here. This bump right here. These seven pixels torment me. I got to fix it. No, you've got other things to worry about. Once you get much more advanced, you're not going to need to manipulate every single pixel of your work because you've just you're the one person studio. You've got to do the layers and animation and the drawing and the sound and the voice and the music and the, the transitions and the fade in, fade out, so many things that the perfectionism that we all have to some degree is really going to get in your way. I could go in and make this tooth perfect. There we go. Now it's perfect. But did I need to send, spend that amount of time to look at every pixel of my artwork? Maybe not. Because in the totality of it, unless I pointed it out to you, none of you would have noticed that that tooth is wrong compared to that tooth is right. So tell me in the chat box right here, now that you've been using Adobe Animate for a moment, tell me in the chat box, is this interesting, weird, difficult, annoying? Does it not compare to Procreate? Is Photoshop better? Any thoughts? Just Put some thoughts there in the chat box of what you've been doing so far um, to get a little bit of feedback there. Just give some thoughts there in the chat of what we've done so far. Yes, I'm going to go and do more homework stuff, definitely. We'll get there very soon. Right, so here's what we're going to do. We have been drawing with the mouse, which is not the best way, although there's some amazing people out there that can really use the mouse. We're going to switch over to start to use our Adobe, uh, our Wacom pen tablets. We're going to use some like real nice drawing tablets. And the way we're going to do this is um, go ahead and save what you have at the moment. Just click save and then you're going to exit Adobe Animate for a moment. Save whatever you have, exit Animate for a moment. And the way we're going to do this is um, we're going to kind of do a little pause here. And I've got the fine tablets right here. So the, the way we're going to do this is uh, orderly fashion. And I will give you these tablets, show you how they work. I 
and we'll see how much better it is with a drawing tablet instead of a mouse. Before I give them out. So uh, these things come from the points. We've got for drawing surface. We're going to return to the Spawn Meet request. So, like I said, for everyone you want to plug in on the side, uh, these can be set to left handed and right handed, but we'll check on that later. I forgot how to do that. But for the moment, they are right handed. Uh, how many of you are left? So uh, these are right handed. Uh, basically, you want to be, uh, you want the little button things on the left side. The right side, you can plug in the cable. You plug that into your computer. There's a USB plug on the right side of the monitor, or the left side of the monitor here. Put all of that in. Now, further show you. So you want to exit Adobe Animate first. And then we'll plug in the tablet because it's just got to detect it. And I found that it works better if you exit animate first and then plug on all of this and then it'll detect it. So, um, you know, you plug in the one side into the tablet. There's a USB plug on the left side of the monitor. 
Was that in? There should be a little light that turns on in one of the four corners of the wheel thing over here. Show you fully in a moment. So how many of you have ever used one of these before? Raise your hand, a few people, maybe. All right, so everyone plug them in for a moment. Once it, once it plugs in, you will see the light light up on the corner here, as well as the four corners right here. So plug that in, count to 10, and then turn on Adobe Animate. So after you plug that in, I'm going to jump back into animate. I'm going to create a new file. File, you can create a new file. Same as before the full uh, HD file thing. You're on the main menu here, you can select the full HD if you want to start a new file. Save that. Week two, practice two, whatever you want to call this. I'm just starting with a separate file. You can continue your previous one, but I would say start a new file. And we need to get used to this a little bit. Just like any tool, it um, has, has its own quirks and such. Uh, for example, this uh, tablet itself has also a bunch of buttons on the side over here that do things. And even this uh, this little circular area, this little this little wheel, if you rotate around it, see how I'm kind of scrolling up and down on my document around the little circle there that's got touch capabilities. Um, and the pad itself is also a big old touch capable thing. Look at that. I can also simply use that as a... Uh, like a big touchpad. But of course, the main idea is that I want to use the, this pen. And the pen itself has the main tip, an eraser on the back side, and then a couple of buttons on the side. One is a click, one is a, I think one's a right click and one's a double click, and all of this can be remapped and so forth. Uh, but just at the basics, just to kind of get used to this, I switch that, switch back to the brush tool, and then I have this and I start to draw. Well, one cool thing about this, it's touch sensitive. If I draw lightly, the line is light. If I press a little harder, it gets thicker. So then now if I want to draw something, it um, is more natural. And, um, or in detail like this. Now, one thing to get used to compared to the mouse, the mouse, has a relative position in that I'm moving the mouse, I get to the edge of my table or whatever, I have to lift the mouse back up and reposition it. The, the tablet has an absolute position that everywhere inside of that square or rectangle is an exact point on the monitor. So if I put on the top right corner here, that's on the top right corner of my monitor. If I go to the bottom left corner, it's on the bottom left corner right there. It's not like you move it for a moment and lift the pen and keep moving it. It follows exactly these dimensions on the tablet compared to the mouse that you move the mouse a moment, you lift up the mouse. Nope, something to get used to. And then also, well, I'm looking at a monitor straight ahead that I got my pen down here. The newest, most advanced ones have your monitor on the tablet itself. We don't have one of those. We have just to get used to that, the monitor is there and then the pen is here and eventually you will. Um, but then maybe with this, it's a little easier to, um, to work with the drawing tools. 
buttons. For the first one, for example, touch on, touch off, press that button for a moment, because touch on also means that you can interact with it with the hand. Touch off is no interaction with the hand. That might be getting in your way. So first button there, touch on, touch off. The other buttons, the second button, for example, gives this pop-up where then further shows you what the rest of the buttons do. Precision mode, for example, so that this tiny place I can draw it exactly perfectly. So the second button is pretty important. It gives you that pop-up to uh, further tell you what the buttons do. And even navigating around just on the screen like this, notice I'm moving up or down or whatever. Well, the, the pen also look, works like a mouse. You can move it around anywhere and then tap it, hold it, and you're moving around. If you flip it over, have you tried that? If you flip it over, hey, that's an eraser. Eraser's too small. Well, the eraser also has a size. So maybe drawing this way with this tool is a little bit easier than with the mouse. Let's do this on the top right corner of your animate window over here. There is a drop down menu of zoom level. This is pretty useful that you do this zooming in, zooming out, and so forth. Whatever your zoom level is here, you see this little drop down menu. Select that fit in window. See how it zooms out to show you everything versus show frame, versus show all, versus zoom in fit in window. Let's select that one for a moment. Whatever your percentage is, it doesn't matter. Mine's going to be different. My computer's a little different. But here, fit in window, then shows you your whole drawing, um, your whole drawing space. Because I've got the brush tool, which is what we're focusing on this week. With the brush tool up on my properties, we have the options now here, use pressure, use tilt. You see how this is highlighted? I wish they would choose a different color, but this is highlighted because use pressure is on. If I turn that off, no more pressure sensitivity, which sometimes I want that, sometimes I don't. Maybe I want all the lines to be exactly uniform. So turn off pressure. If I do want sensitivity, Turn it on. Very subtle also, I can use tilt, sort of like calligraphy, I guess. As you kind of draw and tilt it around, that gives you other results as well. There's two options there. And it's very subtle. I don't like that it highlights blue and then it's highlighted bright color as well. You want to be sure that you know what you've selected. And for the moment, the easiest way to sort of practice this is to make layers, hide layers, you know, clearing layers and so forth. That's a thing, yes. But for the moment, just to get used to creating layers and hiding layers and such is good. So I'm getting used to the drawing tools. 
that we've got properties, selecting colors, selecting the object, filling in colors, Here, for example, I was filling in the colors of this King of Atlantis, I guess. And I was filling in the colors and the color filled into the eye and also into the mouth, which I didn't want. Here is where, again, these are the, I, I see a, a sea king, but Animate sees lines. And Animate saw that the mouth lines are not complete and the eye line is not complete. Therefore, when I dropped in the color, it flowed all the way until the eye and all the way until the mouth. Undo that. So be aware of that, that um, any lines that you want to be separate, you know, any shapes or concepts that you want to be separate should be in their own, uh, you know, the lines should be separated enough so that then when I add color, Fill in color right there. The colors did not spill into the other spots. The lines need to be closed. I'm used to zooming in and out to see all of these details. I'm kind of doing it too fast. Um, again, there's so many things to learn, but here's a little technique that I like Again, we'll learn all of these as we get better. But on the keyboard, if you do control plus, you zoom in, control minus, you zoom out. This is different than what I showed earlier about zooming into the whole screen and such. Uh, in Adobe Animate with control or command on the Mac, control plus zooms you in, control minus zooms you out. Sometimes that's useful to zoom in for the details. But again, it's up to you to determine how perfectionist you want to be. But control plus, control minus. Similar to that on the mouse, this is interesting, uh, control, hold control, and then on the scroll wheel, if you do, if you do uh, con hold control on the keyboard and you scroll up, it zooms in, and then hold control, scroll down, and it zooms out. That's kind of a fast way also. Can't fully show the mouse here, but I'm holding control. And sometimes when I want to zoom in and zoom out very easily right on the mouse here, there's also a way to do it on the tablet, pen tablet, but... That's kind of useful, zooming in, zooming out, so I can fix the details. It's just lots of shortcuts out there, and little by little, as you practice, you'll start to discover the shortcuts, memorize the shortcuts. In the uh, in the animate guide on the week two, there's the visual glossary that you should all look at at some point, where it shows all of the various tools and their shortcuts and such. There's the various tutorials to further um, learn about the, the elements of Animate. All right, so we'll do one more break, and then we'll talk about Okay, I'm starting to get used to the tools, but now to do the homework, there's this concept where I where I need to trace the pre-made characters. It's very useful, especially as a beginner, to to trace or to learn from another example. Obviously, as you get better at the software, you, you create your own characters and such. But as a beginner, we'll see about tracing characters. That is, we need to import. Uh, an extra file into our current file. So we'll do that in a moment. It's 2.10. We'll take one more break from 2.10 to 2.20. You can uh, stay here, do some work, go outside, whatever you want. We'll continue the lesson in 10 minutes at 2.10. And then we'll wrap up for the day in a bit. I have it.
All right, let's move on. So this will be the final hour or so of the class. Now, as a reminder, though, um, because I'm recording everything, remember if anyone needs to leave early for the bus or a ride, whatever, that's fine. You don't need to ask for permission to leave the class. We're in college. But if you need to give back the tablet before you leave, you can check with Angie in the back. So um, it's fine if people get here late or have to leave early. That's fine. But if people need to leave, remember, just leave through the back. No problem. All right, so um, the homework relates to drawing, or that is tracing an existing character. Let me back up to remind you of the homework and then how we accomplish a few things here. The homework has, you need to create a project folder. You can do that on your own. You create a file. And I have a mention here about 24 frames per second. I'll show you that in a moment. You need to save the file. And I say last name here and I say, put your last name, of course. Don't turn it in saying last name. People do that all the time for some reason. Your last name, so I know who to give the A plus to, is what you put there, not the word last name. Question. Uh, that is basic computer operation on Windows or Mac, but you can get a little bit of help with that in the lab time in a moment. So then we need to cover the concept of layers and a tracing image and importing those files. We'll cover that in a moment. And something called a guide layer. So that as you're tracing these things, you have a guide to work on. Naming your layers and then uh, drawing with the brush tool that we've learned so far. Now there's this, there's other tools um, within the software like the Bezier pen tool and the line tool and other things. But for the moment, I say here, stick with the fill drawing tool. And I haven't covered the difference between fill and outline. That'll be next time because there's plenty to learn. But what we've learned this week with the brush tool, focus on using the brush tool, even though there's these other tools to use, again, little by little, we'll get there. And I know that everyone wants to get ahead very quickly, but by sometimes jumping ahead, you maybe you miss the details of now. So before we get too advanced, we need the basic stuff. And again, tracing it as best as you can for practice and so forth. You don't need every single line or every single pixel, but um, that's what you need to focus on. Basic coloring, and I'll come back to coloring in a moment, and then exporting. So these are still things we need to cover. And here's how we will do it. So let's get back to animate. The Whatever you were drawing at the moment, you can save it if you want. You can close it. You can go to File Menu, Close. And we're going to start with a new file because... Let's say we wanted to start brand new with a brand new project, so we click close. We were using the HD template, but there's many ways to do the same thing. Let's, let's check this out slightly differently. If instead you clicked on the new file on the left, let's try it that way. From this main menu here, click new file. It'll give you a pop-up with many more templates character, template, social, games, education, all of these things. Again, this software can do a lot. And even from this brand new new document screen, we also have, my screen cuts it off, but at the bottom we have these samples as well. Maybe I want to get started off with the, with the bacon and eggs from last week and start to change it. But if we go this route, new file, here we have the HD and full HD. Well, for the assignment, we want the full HD. And notice here, width and height and frame rate. This is currently set to 30 frame rate, 30 FPS. For the assignment, we want that to 24. And we can change it here or on another screen that I'll show you in a moment. But here's another way to do the same thing, going to the menu, clicking on the template, etc. Full HD, set that to 24. And then create. I get this brand new file. And with the selection tool, if I just click on the empty background, I get the properties of the document. Here's another place where I can make some basic changes to my document, like dimensions and frame rate, FPS, and stage background color. 
There's no requirement to changing your background color, but here is where you can change your background color. So instead of a basic white sheet of paper, you can go with a different background color if you want. That's not necessary for the assignment, but pro tip, if you change your background color to a slightly gray color, that's a little bit better because when you're drawing, if you leave it on white, you're not going to notice when you have holes in your drawings. Let's say you draw a character and you would give it eyes and you never fill in the eyes of color. That's a hole right there. You're going to see the background color. If you change your background color to something besides white, you'll notice the holes in your drawing because the white makes you think, yeah, I drew it right. I filled in all the colors. I filled in all the lines. But no, there was a part that was missing. So this is optional, but I would recommend switch to some gray color for the background. And you find that again by using the selection tool, selecting the background under the properties of the document, stage color. And if you didn't set your frame rate, FPS, here's where you can set it. Save this, file save or save as. This is all practice for the moment. So this is not what you're gonna turn in. This is just practice. Just gonna call it whatever you want. Week two, practice three, whatever. Just, it's practice. My layer at the moment is called layer one. I need to change a few things about it. I'm gonna change the name and the type of layer that it is. The way to do it this way here is you want to right click on it, right click on your layer and you have properties. Go to properties this time. So on layer one, right click properties. Here's where you can have the layer name, but more importantly, we want this type of layer to be a guide. If this is a normal layer, when we save it or export it or print it or animate it or whatever, it may get in our way. This layer is going to be the layer that we're gonna, we're gonna trace a character, the example. But I don't want it to be a normal layer. I want it to be a guide layer. If it's a guide, it will not animate once we get to that eventually. It will not be visible once we export it or save it or turn it in, whatever. So you find that by right-clicking the layer and then properties, type guide. And let's rename that layer to tracing. The, the image that I'm going to trace is going to be in this layer. And then on a new layer, I'm going to actually do, do my drawings. We'll get, that. we'll get there in a moment. But these names can be whatever you want, usually, but check the assignment. So tracing, it's a guide. You can change also various things here, like the opacity. Do I want the layer to be fully visible, halfway visible, invisible? For the moment, just leave it visible. Click OK. Notice how the icon changes. A regular layer has a certain icon. This has a different icon. And it's funny because this icon is representing a graphic design tool that, um, that you don't really see nowadays. It's called a T-square. Look it up online if you want. What's a T-square? But anyway, that icon, it's not a hammer. You know, this is not the mine, Minecraft hammer. Uh, this is a T-square in graphic design. It's just an icon that says this is a special kind of layer. And what I want to do is I want to borrow the picture of a uh, character from online and put it into animate so I can trace it. In the assignment, there's specific ones I want you to use. We'll get back to that in a moment. But for the practice right here about how do I get some other file into this file, we'll do it this way. Go to the web, open up any web browser, Chrome, Firefox, Edge, whatever. Um, go to any search engine, whatever. And I'm going to look up, for example, Mario. Or you can look up Bart Simpson or Bluey or SpongeBob or insert your favorite character here. But we're going to just look up any character 
on any search engine so we can borrow. I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna draw um, Mario and Yoshi, sure. Or maybe a little cap, what's the cap's name again? Cappy? I don't know, I never played that one. Um, so let's go online, find any character on any search and uh, probably you can just right click and save, save image. see if that works. The point is for the practice here, I'm just trying to borrow, I'm trying to find some sort of image from online. I'm trying to save it. In my case, yeah, it's going to save, I guess. Uh, but download some graphics file of some character that you like. I'm going to save this in my case to the downloads or the desktop, wherever you want, wherever you want to find it. Maybe it'll be easier for me on the desktop. So right click. The trick here is right click, save image, download image, whatever your browser may say. I'm in Edge, but all the browsers are the same. Right click, save image when you find one that you like. Save it. Just download it onto my computer. So that then in animate, when I go back to animate, file, import to stage. The current activity, you want to download an image of a character. And then in animate, you want to file menu, import, import to stage. And the picture that I just downloaded, in my case, I put mine on the desktop. It's the desktop, desktop. And uh, should be on the desktop. No, but downloads. So file import to stage. Mine went to downloads. Here we go, Mario. Open. Big. I'll show you how to resize it in a moment. But let's try this. If you have any trouble, call me or hand you over. So let's import some picture. What I do now.
an original graphic from the internet. All right, so if you imported your picture and it's too big, here's what we need to do. It needs to fit obviously with inside of your drawing area. If it's too big, we need to resize it. So once it's on the stage right there, you can use the uh, free transform tool here. We've got this move tool, this selection tool. You wanna select it, but then you've got this free transform. With the free transform there, then you can grab the edge and resize it. Now, if you stretch it or whatever, that's okay, but you want to resize it so that it does fit within the size of your drawing surface. So within fit window, there it was, it was way too big, so I had to zoom out, and then I selected, selected it, and then free transform, and now it's a little bit better sized. All right, so the... Um, the importing right here, this is very important. I've got now something that I can use as a way to trace it. And what I want to do after I import it down here on this tracing layer, you want to click the little lock icon. You don't want to accidentally draw on that layer. You want a separate layer where you're then going to draw on top of. So this lock icon is important. Lock it. And then you can create a new layer. And on that new layer is where I'm going to draw, which I can then call that as draw. Dry IDN, I guess. And so I am um, giving it some sort of name. I have a layer that is the starting point for me to draw on top of but then I have the actual layer where I am going to draw. So let's say I was going to start to trace the character. Again, depending on your character, for this, for example, maybe I wouldn't trace every single line of the, of the clothing right there. Maybe I would have one or two of those lines. But obviously, I need to see some amount of effort. So if I was using the, the brush tool, what would make sense is that I've got the black line, and then I start to draw, and I start to trace. But there's a lot easier ways to go here. The first idea is to start to draw with black, because probably there's a black outline. But here's a tip. If you draw with a color like red or green or yellow, like a bright color, and then later change it to the right color, that's a little bit easier. Because right now my black color is hard to see on the other colors there. So instead, I would recommend start to draw with some other color like bright red or green or yellow or something. Let's say bright green. With bright green, I'm gonna start to trace the character Then every once in a while, I could, I could hide. I could turn off the tracing layer to see how I'm going. Okay, it's coming along. Turn it back on. Trace a little bit more. And maybe hide the tracing layer. Maybe turning it on and off, that's a lot. But remember I said we can also fade out the tracing layer to maybe make it a little easier. Remember to fade out, I can right click the tracing layer, properties, right click tracing, properties. Here's where I had it, visibility, opacity 50%. That's actually very useful because that way now the character's a little bit more faded out so that when my lines are drawn, you kind of see my lines a little bit better. Here's the part about the perfectionism. I made those pixels go a little too far. I can obsess to make every pixel perfect. I don't recommend it. This can be fixed, of course, in many ways. I can go to the eraser and erase the part that's too much, of course. I can move on and leave it and deal with it later. I can obsess with every single line at a time if I want. 
There's lots of ways to approach this. For the moment, I'm just going to kind of do all the lines and then go back and fix them. And I kind of recommend that to do a little bit of lines at a time. You might have the idea that I want to do this, this whole ear perfectly, but you could do it in a terms like this, where one part of the curve like this, let go of the mouse or the pen, and then the next part, connect it right there. Oops, I went too far. Am I going to obsess that I followed the line exactly perfectly like the original? No, because once I finish my drawing, that's perfect. It didn't follow the original ear exactly, but the end result here shows that it's got, you know, an ear. Depending on the complexity of the character, do I want every single line? Look at this. In my case here, there's the shading that makes the ear nice and fluffy. But then in my case, I didn't draw every line, but the end result still looks nice. And I'm doing effort. It's not like I'm cutting corners and so forth. Got a line at a time. If the line isn't great, undo it right away and try it again if you want. This is again how obsessive do I want to be with things? How perfectionist? A lot of us do have a perfectionist nature, which is great. But again, time wise, deadline wise, skill wise, it's kind of about, about learning the big ideas first and then the details. Here on the little Mario M, I'm not, you know, the, the original drawing has a, has a two lines, but I'm taking a little shortcut. I'm using one line that gets the point across. The original drawing has two lines. That's fine. I, I'm practicing. I, I don't need every single line of the original, but I need to draw enough of it to complete it. Again, everything that I'm saying here, this is all being recorded. You'll be able to replay the recording, et cetera. We're going to have these lab times from at least on Mondays from three to four. Other days of the week, we're still figuring that out. I still have a little bit more to say, but practice for like a couple of minutes. I've got a little bit more to say. Let's, let's see how we're working here. Now, let me show you something here. Um, obviously, my character is not finished yet, but let me show you here. If you, um, as I said, I am drawing with an obviously the wrong color, uh, but it is useful to draw with a very obvious color and then fix it later. So, for example, to fix it later, I, I want black lines here, so several ways to do it. And one way is if you go with your selection tool, you click on a line, most likely you want to double click on a line, it selects it so that then you can go to the properties of that object and set the color to the real color that you want. As I said, you could draw it right away in black or the right color, but that might be hard to see as you're tracing the original image. I like to draw with a very obviously bright color and then at the end, go in and change the line colors by selecting and then switching to the color you want. When I do then the drawing and such, and I'm close to the end of it, that's when I can go in with the select tool, with the erase tool, with whatever, and start to fix the, the little details. Where I had those lines overlapping, in my case here, from my previous line, 
I went over a little bit too far, well, you might think right away, okay, go to the erase tool and erase the extra parts. Sure, but this is very interesting with animate that if you use the selection tool and you kind of overlap the other lines, you kind of overlap and erase each other in an interesting way. You kind of have to do it yourself to see what I mean. But as I push and pull these lines over, they, they overlap, they erase each other, and then you can click to select and also press delete on the keyboard. So you see where I had those lines overlapping, I went in and did a little bit more polish. Maybe here where, the, where that line, when I was zoomed out, it looked like all the lines touched there properly, but there's a little bit of a gap. If I try to fill in color, that eye is gonna fill to another color. There needs to be the gap closed there. So to finish that, I could go to the selection tool and drag these lines over so that they do intersect, they do touch, and there they go. Now it's a closed shape so that when I add the color, the color doesn't spill out. See, with that little of a gap there, if I wanted to fill in color with the paint bucket, let's say color, I'm trying to fill in a color, it won't do it because there's an empty shape there. If the shapes overlap even just a little bit, like two pixels, that overlap right there now will let me fill in with the paint bucket the right color. So by going by the first pass through of lines, I might not have noticed that there's these lines with a gap. When I finish drawing it, that's when I can then zoom in and fix the details. Question? So when you get to the part about filling, you want to make sure that all the lines are connected. And one way to easily connect them is just with the selection tool. You want to drag the edges of the lines to make sure they're connected. You want to zoom in more. So you've got your zoom percentage. You want to zoom in more to make sure that all the lines are connected. If there's no connection, like right here, if I zoom in 2000%, I see there's a little bit of a gap that is not connected. But if I'm looking at it at, at the normal zoom, yeah, that looks like it's connected, but it's not. So after you draw your first lines, everyone should then go in and make sure all the lines are connected. And that simply is selection tool, grab the edge of the line and pull it so that it touches and connects and closes. Once it is closed, a closed shape, a closed area, then you can go to your paint bucket tool and then start selecting the colors, fill color. Technically there's a fill, there's a stroke, we'll get to that later. But your fill color is the color that you'd be using with the paint bucket to start to fill in the details. So what I'm gonna do here is um, I'm gonna end the recorder to kind of end the class in a moment. But as I said, lab time and such, today there will be lab time between three and four. If you want to stay and keep working and ask questions, great. If you wanna leave, go home, that's fine. The assignment and the details of it should be enough for you to, to do the assignment. Of course, if you need clarification, stay for the lab time. The assignment is due next Tuesday. So it's for you to further practice importing a graphic, drawing. Again, I cannot pass these out, these tablets for you to work with them at home. You can only use them here in the lab. So yeah, at home, you're gonna have to use the mouse or an equivalent tablet. But that's why you have a week plus one day to work on these. Trace them, color them, however you want. I'm not looking for any complexity so far with amazing gradients and cell shading and all of that. You haven't quite learned that. You've learned to use a little bit of the brush tool, a little bit of the paint bucket. There's still way more to learn. Don't worry about getting too fancy. But the ideas are also, how do, how do you turn on the app? How do I import a graphic? How do I make layers? What are my tools? All of this basic stuff as we get more advanced. The original character is not due yet. It is simply just the, uh, it is just the, um, 
the the tracing since it says two characters do we do both characters in one file do them in two separate files that's a good point you do have to do two characters do it in two separate files and also what the way i did it right now was we borrowed a character from the internet that was for the practice for the assignment i have noted right here download these examples if you go off and download samurai jack and turn it in and it's amazing great you get an f Samurai Jack is not part of the ones that I've got right here. You have to use the ones that I've got in step six. The practice that we did right now was practice. How do I import a picture into Animate to trace it? But for the assignment, you have to use one of the 11 examples I've got downloadable right there from Canvas. And all the details here about the rest of it should be pretty self-explanatory. And you're gonna do two different characters on two different files. Oh, actually, one more thing, I guess, here. Export the image as PNG. Well, that's easy. When the image is finished, you go to File, Export, and then Export Image. Your Export Image, I have here, Export as a PNG24. No transparency. One moment. Uh, so the final part about converting it to upload, as I showed here, you're all going to go, and I'm recording this, file, export, export image. And then from this exporter, you select ping 24, PNG 24, no transparency. When you click on save, then you've got those two files, your FLA file that you've been drawing on and the PNG file that is finished. Both of those you'd submit or two characters, so four files in total. Just one moment, question? For the name tags here, um, you can leave them. When people go home, you can leave your name tag. So one of the 11 from the example on So we'll segue into some lab time. If you want to stay until four, just to work and ask questions and so forth, you can do so. If you want to go home, you can go home. And this is week two of our class.